To whom in vassalage, thy merit hath my duty strongly knit. To thee I send this written ambassage to, so, to show my duty, not to show my wit. Duty so great, which wit so poor as mine, may make seem bare and wanting words to show it. But that I hope some good conceit of thine, in thy soul, thought, all naked, will bestow it. Till whatsoever star that guides my moving points on me graciously with fair respect and puts a peril on my tattered loving. GPS to show me lost. worthy of thy sweet respect, then may I dare to boast how I do love thee. Till then, not show my head, where thou mayest prove me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Weary with toil, I haste me to my bed. The dear repose for limbs would travel tired. But then begins a journey in my head to work my mind when body's works expired. For then my thoughts from far where I abide intend a zealous pilgrimage to thee. And keeping my drooping eyelids open wide, looking on darkness which the blind do see. Save that my soul's imaginary sight presents thy shadow to my sightless view, which like a jewel hung in ghastly night makes black night beauteous and her old face new. Lo, thus by day my limbs, by night my mind, for thee and for myself, no quiet find. How can I then return in happy plight that I am debarred the benefit of rest? When day's oppression is not eased by night, but day by night and night by day oppressed, and each though enemies to either's reign. Do in consent shake hands to torture me, the one by toil, the others to complain. How far I toil, still farther off from thee. I tell the day to please him thou art bright, and dost him grace when clouds do blot the heaven. Slow flatter I the swart complexioned night, when sparkling stars twire, not thou gilst the even. But day both daily draw my sorrows longer, and night doth nightly make grief's length seem stronger. Apne pyaar se bohut dur, fir mein khush turdasha mein kaise lot sakta hoon, jab baaki ke laap ko kharij karke mujhe dur kar diya gaya hai, जब दिन की पीड़ा रात को आसान नहीं होती लेकिन दिन रात और रात को दमन करके दिन और प्रत्येक दिन रात हालांकि दुश्मन हो आपस में या राज करें एक दूजे पे सहमति में करो मुझे यातना देने के लिए हाथ मिलाओ कठिन परिश्रम करता हूं ये शिकायत भी करता हूं मगर इतने परिश्रम के बाद मैं अभी भी कितना आप सब से दूर हूं अपने कष्ट में दिन रातों दोनों को शांत करने का प्रयास करता हूं मैं दिन को खुश रहने के लिए बताता हूं आप ही तो उज्जवल हैं आप ही तो प्यारे हैं और जब बादल स्वर पर छा जाते हैं उस पर कृपा करते हैं मैं खुशामद भी करता हूं इस काली सलोनी रात की लेकिन जब सोने सी चमकती रात का कोई प्रभाव नहीं पड़ता है और दिन प्रतिदिन मेरे दुखों को और ज्यादा आकर्षित करता है और रात में लगातार उसके बारे में मैं सोचकर सो नहीं पाता और रात रात के दुखों की लंबाई और मजबूत बनाता है when, in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone beweep my outcast state, and trouble death heaven with my bootless cries, and look upon myself and curse my fate, wishing me like to one more rich in hope, featured like him, like him with friends possessed, desiring this man's art and that man's scope, with what I most enjoy, contented, least. Yet in these thoughts, myself almost despising, 
Have the I think on thee. And then my state, like to the lark at break of day, arising from sullen earth, sings hymns at heaven's gate. For thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings that then I scorn to change my state with kings. Winter the sessions of sweet silent thought, I summon up remembrance of things past. I sigh the lack of many a thing I sought, and with old woes new wail my dear time's waste. Then can I drown an eye unused to flow for precious friends hid in death's dateless night, and weep afresh love's long since canceled woe, and moan the expense of many a vanished sight. Then can I grieve at grievances foregone, and heavily from woe to woe tell o'er the sad account of poor bemoaned moan which I knew pay as if not paid before. But if the while I think on thee, dear friend, all losses are restored and sorrows end. My bosom is endeared with all the hearts, which I, by lacking, have supposed dead. And there reigns love, in all love's loving parts. And all those friends which I thought buried, how many a holy and obsequious tear hath dear religious love stolen from mine eye. As interest of the dead, which now appear, but things removed that hidden in thee lie, thou art the grave where buried love doth live, hung with the trophies of my lovers gone, who all their parts of me to thee did give, that do of many now is thine alone, their images I loved, I view in thee, and thou, all they, hast all the all of me. Thank you. If you survive me, long after dust covers my bones, and you should just happen to read once again these poor crude sonnets written by the man who once loved you. Remember that things have improved since my day. But have they though? Have they really? Have they? I don't think they have. I think things have gotten worse, but that's a <clears throat> sonnet scene. So even though any poet of the day can write better sonnets, keep mine for the sake of my love. For the sake of my love. For the sake of my love. Yeah, and not my rhymes, because I'm sure luckier, happier men can far exceed those. Still, grant me this loving thought. Had my friend's muse grown with this growing age, oops, now I gotta, see, this is what I mean, it's old and forget stuff. Had my friend's muse grown with this growing age a dearer birth than his love had brought to march in ranks of better equipage. But since he died, and better poets prove theirs for their style, I'll read his for his love. Full many a glorious morning have I seen flatter the mountain tops with sovereign eye, kissing with golden face the meadows green, gilding pale streams with heavenly alchemy. Anon permit the basest clouds to rise with ugly rack on his celestial face, and from the forlorn world his visage hide, stealing unseen to west with this disgrace. E'en so my sun once early morn did shine, all triumphant splendor on my brow, but out, alack, he was but one hour mine. The region cloud hath masked him from me now, yet him for this my love no whit disdaineth. Sons of the world may stain when heaven's sun stain. such 
such a beauteous day and make me travel forth without my cloak to let base clouds overtake me in my way hiding thy bravery in their rotten smoke tis not enough that through the cloud thou break to dry the rain on my storm-beaten face for no man well of such a salve can speak that heals the wound and cures not the disgrace nor can thy shame give physic to my grief though thou repent yet i have still the loss the offender's sorrow lends but weak relief to him that bears the strong offense's cross. Ah, but those tears are pearl which thy love sheds, and they are rich in ransom all ill deeds. De che mai prevestito zicu suare, sunt gol fortuna mai juns din orma, she keep will to peritan departare, sub nori grey she chaturi le tum orma. Oh, nui distulsa runch zumbundo raza, pe fatsa mea udata de fortuna, who vintile du wasum wushu raza, maniere adwar rushinia nu e buna, kalimsa she regretu le udojana, she sing gortaya les storel. Na duce, de plina vindicare pentru rana, ceo porta umilitur ca pe o cruce. Dar lacrimile tale nestemate, din dragosta rescumpara tacate. No more be grieved at that which thou hast done. Roses have thorns and silver fountains mud. Clouds and eclipses stain both sun and moon and loathsome hank canker lives in sweetest bud. All men make faults, and even I in this, authoring thy trespass with compare. Myself corrupting, salving thy amiss, excusing thy sins more than thy sins are. For to thy sensual fault I bring incense, thy adverse party is thy advocate. And against myself a lawful plea commence. Such civil war is in my love and hate that I am an accessory needs must be to that sweet thief which sourly robs from me. Let me confess that we too must be twain, although our undivided loves are one. So shall those blots that do with me remain, without thy help, by me, be born alone. In our two loves there is but one respect, though in our lives a separable spite. Which, though it alter not love's sole effect, yet doth it steal sweet hours from love's delight. I may not evermore acknowledge thee, lest my bewailed guilt should do thee shame, nor thou with public kindness honor me, unless thou take that honor from thy name. But do not so. I love thee in such sort, as thou being mine, mine is thy good report. Thank you. As a decrepit father takes delight to see his active child do deeds of youth, so I, laid lame by fortune's dearest spite, take all my comfort of thy worth and truth. For whether beauty, birth, or wealth, or wit, or any of these all, or all, or more, entitled in thy parts do crown it sit, I make my love engrafted to this store. So then I am not lame, poor, nor despised, whilst that this shadow doth such substance give, that I in thy abundance am sufficed and by a part of all thy glory live. Look what is best, that best I wish in thee. This wish I have, then ten times happy me. How can my muse want subject to an event while thou dost breathe, that pourest into my verse thine own sweet argument too excellent for any vulgar paper to rehearse? Oh, give thyself the thanks, if art in me, worthy perusal stand against thy sight. For who's so dumb that cannot write to thee? Without thyself dost give invention light. Be thou the tenth muse, more ten times in word than those old nine rhymes invocate. And he that calls on thee, let him bring forth the eternal numbers to outlive long day. If my slight muse do please these curious days, the pain be mine, but thine shall be the praise. <laughs> For oh, how thy worth with manners may I sing, when thou art all the better part of me. What mine 
What can mine own praise to mine own self bring? And what isn't but mine own when I praise thee? Even for this let us divided live, and our dear love lose name of single one, that by this separation I may give, that due to thee which thou deservest alone. O absence, what a torment wouldst thou prove, were it not thy sour leisure gave sweet leave to entertain the time with thoughts of love, which time and thoughts so sweetly doth deceive, and that thou teachest how to make one twain by praising him here, who doth hence remain. Take all my love, my love, yeah, take them all. What hadst thou then, more than thou hadst before? No, my love, no, I'm sorry, excuse me, no love, my love, that thou mayst true love call. All mine was thine, before thou hadst this more. Then if for my love thou my love receivest, I cannot blame thee, for my love thou usest. But yet be blamed if thou thyself deceivest, by willful taste of what thyself refusest. I do forgive thy robbery, gentle thief, although thou steal thee all my poverty. And yet love knows it is a greater grief to bear love's wrong than hate's known injury. Lascivious grace, in whom all ill will shows. Fill me with spite, yet we must not be foe. <laughs> Those petty wrongs that liberty commits when I am sometimes absent from thy heart. Thy beauty and thy years full well befits, for still temptation follows where thou art. Gentle there out, thou art, and therefore to be one. Beauteous thou art, and therefore to be assailed. And when a woman woes, what woman sons will sourly leave her till she have prevailed? I me, but yet thou might, mightest my seat forbear, and chide thy beauty, thy straying youth, who leave thee in their right even there, or thou art forced to break a twofold truth. Hers by thy beauty, tempting her to thee, thine by thy beauty, being false to me. That thou hast her, it is not all my grief. And yet it may be said I loved her dearly. That she hath thee is of my wailing chief, and loss in love that touches me more nearly. Loving offenders, thus I will excuse ye. Thou dost love her because thou knowest I love her. And for my sake, even so doth she abuse me, suffering my friend for my sake to approve her. If I lose thee, my loss is my love's gain. And losing her, my friend hath found that loss. Both fight each other, and I lose both twain. And both for my sake lay on me this cross, but here's the joy. My friend and I are one. Sweet flattery. Then she loves but me alone. <laughs> when most I wink, then do mine eyes best see. For all the day they view thee view things unrespected, but when I sleep, in dreams they look on thee, and darkly bright are bright in dark directed, then thou whose shadow shadows doth make bright, how would thy shadows form, form happy show, to the clear day with thy much clearer light, when to unseeing eyes they shade, thy shade shines so, how would, I say, mine eyes be blessed made, by looking on thee in the living day. When in dead night thy fair in perfect shade, through heavy sleep on sightless eyes doth stay, all days are night to see thee till I see thee. And night, night's bright days when dreams do show thee me. If the dull substance of my flesh were thought, injurious distance should not stop my way. For then, despite of space, I would be brought from limits far remote where thou dost stay. No matter then, although my foot did stand upon the farthest earth removed from thee, for nimble thought can jump both sea and land as soon as think the place where he would be. But ah, thought kills me that I am not thought, to leap large lengths of miles where thou art gone, but that so much of earth and water wrought I must attend time's leisure with my moan, receiving not by elements so slow, but heavy tears, badges of either as well. The other two, slight air and purging fire, are both with thee, wherever I abide. The first, my thought, the other, my desire. 
these present absent with swift motion slide. For when these quicker elements are gone, in tender embassy of my love to thee, my life, being made of four, with two alone, sinks down to death, oppressed with melancholy, until life's composition be recurred by those swift messengers returned from me, who even, but now come back again, assured by, assured of thy fair health, recounting it to me. This told I joy, but then no longer glad. I send them back again, and straight grow sad. Mine eye and heart are at a mortal war, how to divide the conquest of thy sight. Mine eye, my heart, the picture sight would bar. My heart, mine eye, the freedom of that right. My heart doth plead that thou and him dost lie, a closet never pierced with crystal eyes. But the defendant doth that plea deny, and says in him, thy fair appearance lies. To side this title is impaneled a quest of thoughts, all tenets to the heart. And by their verdict is determined the clear eyes moiety and the dear heart's part, as thus. Mine eyes do is thou, thy outward part, and my heart's right thy inward love of heart. Betwixt mine eye and heart a league is took, and each doth good turns now unto the other. When that mine eye is famished for a look, or heart in love with sighs himself doth smother, with my love's picture, then my eye doth feast, and to the painted banquet bids my heart. Another time mine eye is my heart's guest, and his thoughts of love doth share a part. So either by thy picture or my love, thyself away art resent still with me, for though not farther than my thoughts canst move, and I am still with them, and they with thee. Or if they sleep, thy picture in my sight awakes my heart to hearts and eyes delight. How careful was I when I took my way, each trifle under truest bars to thrust, that to my use it might unused stay, from hands of falsehood in sure wards of trust. But thou, to whom my jewels trifles are, most worthy of comfort, now art my greatest grief. Thou, best of dearest and my only care, art left the prey of every vulgar thief. Thee have I not locked up in any chest, save where thou art, though, though I feel thou art. Within the gentle closure of my breast, from whence a pleasure thou mayst come and part. And even thence thou wilt be stolen, I fear, for truth proves thievish for a prize so dear. <laughs> Against that time, if ever that time come, when I shall see thee frown on my defects, when as thy love hath cast its, his utmost sum, called to that audit by advised respect. Against that time when thou shalt strangely pass and scarcely greet me with that sun thine eye, when love converted from the thing it was, shall reasons find of settled gravity. Against that time do I ensconce me here within the knowledge of mine own desert, and this my hand against myself uprear to guard the lawful reasons on, on thy part. To leave poor me, thou hast the strength of laws, since why to love, I can allege no cause. Вот черный день, пусть он минует нас, когда увидишь все мои пороки, когда терпение истощишь запас, и мне объявишь приговор жестокий, когда со мной соитясь в толпе людской, меня едва подаришь взглядом ясно, и я увижу холод и покой в твоем лице по-прежнему прекрасно. В тот день поможет горе моим сознание, что я тебя не стою, и руку я при всяких дням, все оправдав своей неправотой.
How heavy do I journey on the way when what I seek, my weary travels end, doth teach that ease and that repose to say, this far the miles are measured from thy friend. The beast that bears me, tired with my woe, plods dully on to bear that weight in me as if by some instinct the wretch did know his rider loved not, speed being made from thee. The bloody spur cannot provoke him on, but sometimes anger thrusts into his hide, which heavily he answers with a groan more sharp to me than spurring to his side. For that same groan doth put this in my mind, my grief lies onward and my joy behind.